Today I'm going to show you how to sew an infant gown that has the no scratch mittens attached to it and you can also add some optional pockets to the front just to make it look a little cuter. If you are a beginner sewer, that is okay. I will show you how to do every single step and yes, you can do it too. The printable pattern pieces for this project are linked below in the description box. So go ahead and print them out and trace them onto your fabric and cut it out so you can sew along with me. This pattern is a part of the infant keepsake capsule pattern set that we have. It is the perfect gift for newborns. Here are my fabric pieces cut out. This is the front and back. This is the front neckline, the back neckline piece. This is the band that will go around the bottom of your gown. You're gonna need two sleeves, two cuff pieces, and two of my purple polka dots that will be the fold over mittens. And before I forget, this is for boys and girls. Here's the optional pocket that you can add. I have six pattern pieces for pockets that you can choose from. You can add it anywhere you want to, to adorn it just a little bit. You're cutting your fabric. Keep your pattern piece with the fabric piece so that you don't get it mixed up. Now we're gonna to go to the front of the gown and get the neckband piece for the front of your gown. You're going to fold it in half with the wrong sides together. That means the pretty side of the fabric should be on the outside. Now you're just going to line up this folded band across the top of the gown neckline. Pin or clip it in place all the way across. Now one thing, this is a knit fabric sewing project. You can make it with a serger and a sewing machine and I will do some of mine on a serger and some of mine on a sewing machine. If you only have a sewing machine, that is completely okay. You can use that to sew this. You're going to use your machine's zigzag stitch to sew most of this project. You wanna do that so that way you can stretch the knit fabric as needed when baby's wearing it. So now let's take this over to our sewing machine or serger and sew this in place using a 1 4th inch seam allowance. If you're using your sewing machine, just use a regular straight stitch for this part. You're gonna do the same thing for the front and the back of your gown. Here is mine all sewn. I used my serger just to finish off those edges. Again, you can use your regular sewing machine. And after you have that done, you're going to flip up the band that you just sewed with the back of your fabric facing you. You wanna do that so that way you can press down the seam that you just sewed. You don't want it flipped upwards so that it's so you can see that on the collar of your gown. You want it to be pressed down. I like to place a couple of pins or clips all the way across just to hold that in place. And then we're just gonna go and top stitch all the way across the front to hold that seam down. That way it won't flip up and things like that when baby's wearing it or after you wash it. So just sew it slowly, very close to the band of the gown at the neckline. Make sure that you do not pull or push your fabric as it's sewing or your band right now would be wavy. You wanna let the machine do it for you. Press it flat with the iron to make sure it's nice and it stays put. And do the same thing for the front and the back of your gown. Now you wanna get the front of your gown fabric piece and you're gonna to go to the armholes that are right here, those curved moon shapes. You're gonna fold it in half so that you can find the center point of your armhole. 
Make a small mark on the front of your fabric or you can just snip it with your scissors, just a tiny bit big enough for you to see it. When you open it up, this is about how big it should be. Do the same for both of the armholes on the front of your gown. Here are my two slits right here in the middle point of the armholes. Now I'm going to lay my back gown right on top overlapping my front gown. Match up the top corner of the shoulder to that slit that we just made in the armhole. Pin or clip that in place and do the same thing for both sides. After you've done that, you're going to pin or clip the rest of these arm shoulders together just how they lay. Now you're gonna take this over to your sewing machine and sew very close to the edge just to attach these two shoulder pieces together. You're, you're using a basting stitch, which just pretty much means you're just holding the two fabric pieces in place and on the finished garment, it will not show. This is called a lap neck. It is especially for babies where their heads can be bigger or smaller and it allows the top of the gown to completely open so that it's not too forceful putting it on or taking it off. If you want to add an optional pocket, you don't have to, but I'm gonna show you how real quick. Get your two fabric pieces of whichever fabric pocket you're making and lay them with the pretty sides of the fabric together Put some pins or clips all the way around and then starting at the bottom, sew all the way around using a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance and leave about a two and a half or so inch opening right here on the bottom. You wanna leave that opening at any point on your pocket that has a flat side. So if the bottom of your pocket that you're making is rounded, leave the opening on the top. You wanna leave an opening so that way when you go to turn this right side out, you'll be able to do that. Here is mine all sewn. And now you want to go ahead and on all six of the corners of mine, I'm gonna clip all of the corners right up to the stitches, but not cutting through the stitches. We wanna reduce any bulk that we have at those corners. So that way when we turn this right side out, it won't be bulky and those corners will poke out nicely. Now let's turn this right side out and smoothen out all of your seams. If you have corners, go ahead and poke those out. I like to use a chopstick to go into mine to do that and make sure you don't press too hard because it could go right through your stitches. Now to close the hole opening on the bottom, just stick your fingers inside the hole and pull it apart and those Raw edges should flip inward so it's flush with the rest of the fabric on the outside. Press this down with your iron or pin or clip it in place. And then you wanna place this where you want it to go on your gown. 
Now this gown I have already made, so just ignore the sleeves that are in place already, but you wanna be able to put this particular pocket two inches below the inner arm seam. You're just gonna sew right across the top and down the sides just like I am here. You don't sew this part of this pocket closed, or if you have a different pocket, you don't wanna sew the top of it closed. Now going back to the gown that we were already making, go ahead and lay it flat and then fold it in half with the pretty sides of your fabric together. You wanna match up the front and back armholes on each side so that you can find the center point of your shoulder. Just like we did before, make a small clip or you can use a marker and just make a small dot near the edge as your place mark. Then you're going to get one of your sleeves, fold it in half to find the top middle center point. Make a small dot with a marker or clip it with your scissors, just big enough for you to see it. And then you are going to match up the sleeve and the armhole with the right sides, the pretty sides of your fabric together. Pin or clip that in place. And then you're gonna work this around the rest of the armhole area. Now using a 1 4th inch seam allowance, go ahead and sew these two pieces of fabric together. I'm going to use my serger. If you're using your sewing machine, use your machine's zigzag stitch. This will allow that fabric to stretch. If you use a straight stitch, it won't allow the fabric to stretch and your seams will end up busting. Make sure while you're sewing this together, at all times, your fabric is nice and flat with no wrinkles in it, and you don't wanna catch any of the rest of your garment in this armhole, so just make sure you keep pulling that out of the way if it's in your way. You're going to do the same thing to attach both of the sleeves. After this is done, you can see if I fold it in half, it kinda of creates the gown, and now you can see it kind of take shape. But what you wanna do is you wanna fold it in half with the right sides together. That means that the pretty sides of your fabric should be kissing with the wrong side of the fabric facing out. You wanna align the sides by first going to the arm seams that we just created and putting those two matching together. Pinner clip that area and then pinner clip all the way down the sides of your arms and the entire side of your gown. Now take it to your sewing machine and sew all the way around each side using a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Don't sew the bottom or each of the armholes closed. If you are using your sewing machine, don't forget you're using a zigzag stitch to finish this, not your straight stitch. You don't have to finish the seams on garments with knit fabric most of the time because the fabrics don't fray. So if you're using a zigzag stitch, don't worry about any excess seam allowance. One fourth of an inch is a pretty small seam allowance to have left over anyways. Now go ahead and turn your gown right side out. Smoothen out all of your seams, and you can use your finger to do this. I also go in with a chopstick and make sure that's done. And then we are ready to start attaching the bottom of our gown.
Now go ahead and get the fabric piece for the bottom band of your gown. With the right sides of your fabric together, fold it in half, matching up the short ends, and sew down that side using a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Now you're going to get these ends and fold them together. The top and the bottom, you wanna kiss those together and pin or clip that in place. If you're using a fabric with print on it, the pretty side of your fabric should be on the outside now with the wrong side of your fabric kissing on the inside. Flip this up so it creates a band and then you wanna pin or clip the piece of fabric that's completely opposite to the back of your band. This creates the front center and the back center of your garment band. Now you're going to quarter this off. Here are the front and the back centers, and these are the two side centers. And to get these quartered off into four equal pieces, get the back of your band, and you're gonna kiss it with the front, and then pin or clip the two sides. So you're just quartering it off into four equal pieces. Now that your band is quartered off, you wanna quarter off the bottom of your gown as well. And your side seams act as two place marks and then you wanna fold those two together and that will give you the center point for the front and back center of the bottom of your gown. Place a small mark or clip with your scissors so that you can mark those places. So now you have this quartered off into four different pieces. Now go ahead and get your band and you're going to match up those four pieces with the four pieces that you pinned or clipped on your band. You do this by placing the gown inside of your band. So what you're going to do is with the fold going towards the gown and the raw edges going towards the top, just like this, you're gonna put the gown right through the middle of your band with all the raw edges at the top. Match up each of your clips on your gown with the clips on your band, making sure that the seam of your band is the back of your gown. Now using your serger or your machine zigzag stitch, go ahead and sew all the way around using 1 4 inch seam allowance. Now here is the band all sewn in place. Just flip it down and you're done attaching that band. Now we're going to make the cuffs for the arms and the mittens. You need your cuff fabric, your fold over mitten fabric, and what you're going to do is place your fold over ribbon fabric in half with the wrong sides together. Then you're going to fold it down again, but leave about a half an inch still at the bottom that is overlapping. You can see that the fold goes down and then you have a half inch of fabric left until you meet the bottom raw edge. Then you're going to place this matching up the bottom raw edge of the right side of your fabric. So the pretty side of your cuff fabric, my white fabric here, should be on the inside and we're gonna fold it over the top just like I just did here. So the wrong side of your cuff fabric is facing outward right now. Pin or clip this at the bottom, and then you are going to sew along each of the sides using 1 4th of an inch or your machine zigzag stitch. Here's how I did mine. Now you can see if you flip over one side, it flips it into your cuff. Super easy, right? It looks like it would be more difficult than that, but it's not. 
You have the fold over piece here, which if you fold that over the top of the cuff, it creates the little no scratch mitten because newborns and babies like to scratch their little face. I'm a mom of four and I used to be a pediatric nurse, so I can't tell you how often I love gifting these just to avoid stuff like that. Now to attach the arm cuff to your arm, you're gonna flip it so that the cuff of your mitten is on the inside of your fabric. So you want the cuff part of your mitten inside and then with the fold going towards your gown, put the armhole right inside of your cuff. Match up the side seam of your cuff with the side seam of your arm and pin or clip that in place. Now you'll notice that the cuff of your arm here is a little bit smaller in width than the actual armhole of your arm sleeve. It is supposed to be that way. Once you have it lined up at the seams, just put your fingers in and stretch that apart so that you have it evenly all the way around. And then you are going to sew all the way around to attach the cuff to the arm sleeve. Especially for these tinier sizes, this is the most trying part of getting this whole gown made because the cuff can be so tiny. Make sure all the layers of your raw edges are always matched up perfectly and then you are going to start sewing slowly or surging and going all the way around. You're going to stretch your fabric with you as you sew around so that there is no puckers and, and anything like that on your finished garment. Just keep sewing and pulling your fabric until you are completely finished and then you're gonna do the same thing for your other sleeve. Now you are completely finished. Just pull up the cuff of your sleeve and you will see the cute little mitten here to help baby not scratch themselves. And these are so cute for newborns all the way to six months in size. They make the perfect baby shower gift that is so practical as well. I hope you enjoyed my sewing tutorial. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You have no idea how much it really helps and you'll be notified anytime a new pattern is released and that is super easy to follow because I gear towards beginners. I have patterns for children, for babies, for household stuff, for adults, clothing, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check us out at alohasewingcompany.com. And before you go, mahalo.